Okay, so we've um, we've got this uh, principle back and we've printed it out. What if we now <clears throat> wanted to change it? Because when we when we run this program, we're getting the default. Um, we're getting the default value. Why is that? Because that's what we're setting it to. Oh, by the way, while we're in here, we really ought to do this uh, properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to do this properly, not this kind of hard coded. Uh, we we really ought to call the internal subroutines to do this rather than setting those variables directly. Same thing with set rate. We should always go through the interface wherever possible. Just um, just to be nice and clean all the time. If you can accept the hard coding for the moment, anyway, I know this is hard coded, but uh, we'd use constants def and definitions and things to, to, to not have to use these things. Right, so that I think that's looking nice and clean now. Let's get back to the back to the main program. So what I could do is I could I could call the basic I could call the bond and get the default constructor, which is this thing here, which is going to set my all my values to one hundred. And let's say it was a thousand dollars that I actually wanted to 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 do with my pricing of my bond. Well, at the moment what I'd have to do is this. I'd have to create the, the car key, the, the basic bond object, from the blueprint class. Then I would have to go into that, use the key to set the principal to some, let's say, a thousand dollars. And now if I print that out, we should see that that starts as 100 and goes to 1000. Hopefully that's all making sense. But that's a bit tedious, isn't it? It's a bit tedious creating the basic object and then having to call an, an object method to change the default of 100. Wouldn't it be nicer instead if we did this instead? So, so we'll do a, another bond down here. So if I do bond, more complex bond. But this time I set it with four parameters. I set the principle to 1000. Um, I set the rate to 5%, I set the years to maturity to 10, and I set this to being a semi-annual bond. And then when this bond is created, this, this key, what we will do, actually let's make this a, a very weird bond, very, very strange bond with 999 in the principle. This would be nice... I'll just cut and paste. If I could just do it all in one hit like this, so I need to just change all of these round. Obviously, I know this isn't going to work because I haven't sorted this out yet. So, wouldn't it be nice? Didn't need to do all that, did I? If I could set it like that instead, directly, just straight away, set it to 999.99. Now, I know this isn't going to run, but what I'd like to see is I'd like to see 999 coming out. What I can do is I can set up another constructor. So this constructor is, you go to the Mercedes dealership and you say, I want a Mercedes. And the Mercedes salesperson says, um, what kind of Mercedes? And you say, I don't care, just give me a Mercedes. So they just write down silver, two litres, um, S-class. 
But here we want, um, you know, kind of, we want it to be a, you know, with a roof that comes off, we want it to be a five litre car. Uh, we want it to be in bright yellow and we want it to be E-class or wh whatever. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. You can have separate constructors. So this constructor is the basic constructor and this constructor is going to take these four parameters. Let's then have a look at how we do that. The first thing we do is we go to the .h file and we're going to have to set up another constructor. Notice it's got the same name and it doesn't return anything, so there's no int or anything being returned. Same name, nothing being returned. C++ goes, aha, that must be um, constructor. Now, we're getting an error here because you can't have two constructors which are identical, that's a bit silly. But we can overload here, we can say, well if this one's going to take a double, a double, a double and a char, no problem now. Um, again, this is the interface, so this is the going to the Mercedes dealer and saying just give me a Mercedes and they give you a silver two litre four door. Here you're saying I want a Mercedes but I want it in yellow, I want the roof to come off, I want a five litre engine and big, head, big headlamps or whatever. Yes, you can do it. Obviously, we're going to have to go into this um, file and write another constructor, a second constructor. So this is going to have to take uh, a double, which will set to be prin, a double, which is the rate, or oh, I'll call it rat, so we know it's different, a double, which is the year to maturity, and the char, which is the type. And I'll just do that so that we, that, so that we can see it's different from the variable. Okay, now we can set those things via the special set methods, which we wrote in the previous lesson. Copy and paste a Rooney. There we go. I have created a tailored bond. This is the default bond when we just have the basic bond constructor with no arguments. This is the tailored bond constructor where we have all of these elements here. So let's now give that quick compile. Build succeeded. I've created a default bond. This is before, then I've called set principle, then this is a thousand. I've created a tailored bond. So a tailored bond here, uh, which has a principle of nine, 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 nine. Now sometimes as well, sometimes you'll see the following where You'll see the notation that looks like that. And sometimes with this one, people will do that. Um, let's just quick, quickly run that. Often, typically works. I just like this one. It's just uh, this way of doing it. It's just a little bit less, uh, just a little bit less typing. And C++ just turns one into the other. So don't worry too much about that. Just go with the flow. Every shop has a different way of doing it. Okay, I think we're nearly there. I think we'll just do one last little thing before we move on. What I'm going to do is I'm going, the whole point of this is to get a price, to get a bond price. So I need one more method. Um, get bond price. And Oh, sorry, I need to put, it's not the same as the name of the class, I need to put what it's going to return. It's going to return a double. That looks all right, I think, so far. It's going to make use of these four variables to return a bond price. So let's um, go into here. And let's put it before all of the getting sets, which are all fairly standard. So uh, double gets bond price, no parameters, 
not used. Uh, I'm just going to return 42 for the moment. In the next lesson we'll actually put a function in there which will calculate a price. So let's go back to the main program. So let's get out some prices for these two bonds. So C out basic bond price. Just copy that. Get bond price. Get bond price. And um, we'll get the, um, the complex bond as well, which has the tailored inputs. And these will both come back to 42. But we should be all right there. Uh, let's, it should come back, both come back as 42. In the next lesson, we'll build fail. What's wrong with that? Looks all right to me. Get bond price in here. That looks all right to me. What have I done wrong in here? Get bond price. That looks all right as well. What's wrong with uh, what's wrong with these things? Try that again. What have I done wrong here? Telling me where the error is. Not being there. Tell me what's the problem. How very bizarre. Price. Let's have a look at this thing here. Double get bond price. Looks all right to me. Down here. Ah, oh, silly boy. There we are. Forgot to put the. Uh, forgot to get the, the thingy in there. Should work now. Yep, there we go. Got there in the end. Both coming back as 42. And I think we're done. Next time we will put a proper algorithm in there to come back with a decent price. See you next time.